It's a three bedroom detached bungalow packed full of potential with a total gross development value of 2,194,000. You need to be working with an architect who really knows what they are doing. That is the goal and that is the price point we are looking to not go above. And I can see that the auctioneer is pushing for every pound out of the bidding process. Welcome to another episode of Auction Watch. Today we are looking at an interesting property, lot number 97 at Savius Auction. It's a three bedroom detached bungalow packed full of potential for someone who's able to develop it and realize that potential. It comes in with planning permission to convert it into two dwellings and it is listed at a guide price of 500,000. Let's run through this property and see what it has to offer and run through the numbers. Let's take a closer look at this property. As you can see from the external pictures, it does need considerable amount of work. There is overgrowth as well as a number of issues where they be damp from the internal pictures as well as some roof issues. But when you're looking at this type of property, the concern is not so much the internals because the objective here is that you're going to demolish this entire property and build two new properties. So the thing you're really looking for is the size of the plot and actually the details of the planning. But nevertheless, by looking at these internals, maybe you can decide if you are going to hold this property and maybe utilize it for a couple of years as long as the planning doesn't lapse and then convert it later on. Let's take a closer look at the planning permission that they have gained for this particular lot. When looking at planning that has already been acquired by another individual, the first thing you're trying to look at is, have they maximized the site? Have they got the most that they can out of the planning permission that they have gained? And I think within this planning permission, they have absolutely done that. It's very creative how they've managed to create two houses within this space. Because most oftentimes when looking at properties like this, you are looking at the garden and seeing how you can access the garden and build another property. But here they were able to use the same footprint of the house to enlarge it and then create two dwellings which are semi-detached from the detached house. So they have really maximized the opportunity in terms of what you can gain from here. And actually the houses are quite distant size as you can see you have two bare gardens there that have now been split in the middle so that each house has its own back garden and then also looking at the internal i think it's well proportionate as well as the fact that you have an upstairs which has been extended from the previous property whereby you just had a bungalow so this is really creative to gain the amount of square footage that they have secured from this particular property you need to be working with an architect who really knows what they are doing. People who are very creative in actually putting together the plans so that you can maximize your site. So as you do property, it's not just about identifying the opportunity, but it's about putting together the right power team that is able to support you in your deals in getting the maximum that you can out of the property projects you're working on. Looking at the map, this property is located near Harrow. There is a close by primary school as well as a rail station which gives you good commuting links into central London. If we can take a walk on the street you can see that they are established houses which is a good thing because when you are now building this new property there will not be that many new properties in the close by vicinity which gives you high end values when it comes to your valuation and setting your prices for selling such a property within this established area. Let's dive into the numbers. This property is listed at a guide price of 500,000. As I've said on this show numerous times, you always start with the end in mind and the end for this property is to develop it into two, three bedroom semi-detached properties. And that's where we start our analysis for this property. We look at how much can we sell those properties once we have developed them. You would have to do research in the local area to look 
at how much properties are selling for, but not just any property. You have to specifically look at the new stock within that region to see how much it's selling for. And then we can use that as a guide to price our properties. We already have the information in terms of square footage for each one of the properties we are looking to build. We have two units. One is 177 square meters and the other one is 173 square meters. You go into the market research looking at how much new stock is selling within the area. And if we take a quick look on right move and search within a three mile radius, we can identify properties that are for sale, which are new stock within that area, which then gives us a guide as to how much properties are selling for. What you're specifically looking for there is how much are the properties selling for per square meter. And if you can then work out the sums by totaling the average and then deciding how much you are going to price yours within that band so that you can arrive at a price point you are happy with depending on the finishing that you would do in comparison to the stocks which are on the market. If you're looking to purchase this property, you would look at a wider pool of data. But for the sake of analysis, we'll look at three properties on the listings on Rightmove to give us a guide. And by doing that, we have identified these particular selling prices on a square meter basis. And we then take those particular properties and we divide and create an average that we can then use. And based on this approach, we are able to say we can sell each property at 6,254 pounds per square meter that then gives us the ability to create an end valuation for the properties we are looking to sell. This approach gives us an end valuation for unit number one at 1.1 million and unit number two at 1.0 82 million, uh, giving us a total gross development value of 2,194,000. That's the end value and that's the end goal. Uh, without uh, going into too much details, I have done other calculations of screen for the development cost. This includes stem duty, legal cost, as well as the financing of the property, assuming that we are leveraging at 75% loan to value as well as getting development finance and with an end goal of getting a 20% margin. This then gives us our target price for the auction, which is 656 thousand that is the goal and that is the price point we are looking to not go above when we go into bidding for this auction property when buying property at auction with planning permission remember each planning permission has its own conditions and restrictions this may include architectural designs building materials as well as completion timelines review these conditions carefully to make sure that they align with your project goals and financial budget be aware of financial levies and contributions. These are obligations to the community and can significantly impact your budget. Check if these apply as part of the conditions of the planning and factor them into your financial planning accordingly. Before you go into the auction room, make sure you have your finance sorted. At City Estate Partners, we offer specialized auction finance solutions tailored to your needs. With our expertise and experience, you can bid with confidence and seize the opportunities in today's fast-paced property market. Get in touch with us today at www.citystatepartners.com and explore your financial options for successful bidding. We are in the room. Lot number 97 is coming up and bidding is starting at 500,000. I think there's a lot of interest in this particular lot. Let's see how it fares. Rounded off to 600. Underbid at 590. Rounded off to 600. Round it off to 600. Might be other bidders. Final one, 600. There we are, straight back in. 605 under bidder. No, we all done? No, we're not. 605, I need 610 now. Bidding is over 600,000. That's a key milestone in this auction. Let's see how it keeps creeping up towards our maximum bid price of 652. Current bidding is 615,000. I need 620,000. 620 I have. I need 625 now. We're all done? If so, 620,000 
going for the first time, unless I get a bit of 625. 620,000 going for the second time, unless I get a bit of 625. It's over five minutes now, and I can see that the auctioneer is pushing for every pound out of the bidding process. But I think we are far done here. Let's see. I don't think we can go any further beyond this price point. Uh, it seems like we are going to close in way below our maximum target price. First time, unless I get a bid of 633. 631,000 going for the second time. 631,000 going for the third and final time. We all done. Last chance saloon. Need a bit of 633. I'll take a take a one actually. I'll take a one. Now to drop this down. Apologies, should have noticed that earlier. I'll take a 632 now. Current bid is 631. I'm looking for 632. Okay, I've given you the chance. I've made it easy. I've dropped it. 632 straight back in. I need 633 now. No, okay. 632,000 going for the first time. 632,000 going for the second time. 632,000 going for the third and final time. Last chance saloon. We're all done. Sold. 632. After seven minutes of auctioneering, this particular lot closes in at 632,000 and it is way below our maximum target bid of 652. So if we're in the room for this, we hopefully would have either won it or kept the bidding going. So there you go, another episode of Auction Watch. I hope you have found some useful tips as you go back into the auction house. Make sure that you remember that if you keep to your target price, you'll come out with a deal rather than a mistake. If you find this content useful, subscribe and hit the like button as that's the only way we grow and continue to bring you free content.